all we have to do is go out there and as I've explained, get a lot of the products that are in this room today, brand them up and sell them to the public. Easy. Yeah? Of course, easy, simple stuff. The first job we had to do as a team was choose the team leader. And in our applications and our audition our video tapes, we'd all said we were the best. We were going to be the best to know we were born leaders. We weren't scared of leading a team to victory. So there we have it. And we had the first meeting of choosing Next job, team leader. Next job, pick leaders. Is there anyone that wants to be the project manager? Anyone scream now? I don't I want to be a project manager because I'd be best used selling on the start. That's where I'll shine. Guys, this is shocking. Oh, we're going to win. We're going to win. It's not for going to win. I think we can win the task by selling. Has anybody at this stage willing to put the sauce forward? <laughs> I'll put myself forward if nobody wants to do it. I didn't. I don't really want to do the first week. First week's um, task, but I will do it. Well, poor old Nick there was congratulating before he'd finished the sentence. If no one else wants to do it, I'll have a go. Pretty much had a footprint on his back, to be perfectly honest. So, we all very quickly congratulated Nick on his new role, quite a project manager. And we knew the task in hand. So, we went off to the factory, to meet the team told us about all the different processes. So we had uh, a, an extreme briefing, if you like, a 10 minute briefing into the world and the industry that a lot of you are involved in. Screen printing, digital printer, laser beam printing, bank printing, newspaper printing. To say it went over our head was an understatement. And the problem was, was out of eight guys on our team, there was only actually two of us that had ever done a real day's work. <coughs> so you can imagine, it was quite a tough challenge and quite a lot harder than Lord Sugar made out that morning when he gave us a brief. So that brought us to the production line. Both teams have till midnight to print their products. If we get all the teddies, we've got a lot of teddies to do. <laughs> Once designs are transferred to screens, printing can start. That's how it should look. Yeah. Yep, I'm happy that. Bang off in your heart out. Let's do it. That's what I say. And bags, waiting for red buses. We're in there. <laughs> I can't work out what to do. I'm not going to play that song. because it's not a machine, we're all doing it by hand, so some of the quality is different for each one. <laughs> so, at the moment it's a little bit concerned because I'll be giving me able to sell them full price. Oh man, that's like that. I don't want to waste it, might as well print on it. We do that. So you have it. We had an absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare in the production line. We didn't know what we were doing. We were thrown in at the deep end. Communication we broke down. We chose the products before we chose how and what we were going to actually print on them. We were just thinking about the profit and not the actual practicality of the task in hand. We did produce second grade goods, which was, wasn't good at all. We split up into two teams. I was on the sub team, I was on the sales team. Not far from here, actually, selling my heart out to the general public. We smashed the figures and we sold all the best products that we had. <coughs> Unfortunately, unknown to me, our sub team, we were wholesaling to the trade, went out and sold a load of second grade goods. You saw the buses and the bags, you saw what a nightmare we had with them. You saw the quality wasn't right. Hopefully, you know, in this industry, that sort of standard shouldn't be accepted. Quite right as well, and this is the situation we're looking for. But for the boys, an unhappy customer. Yeah, basically, these have marks on um, each one, there's ten, they all have imperfections. So you've got stains here, stains here, you've got ones that are really, really faded or overprinted and missed. So it's so unprofessional. No, I do apologize, I can assure you, 
It's not our intention to sell you in any seconds of return merchandise. They sell some of their product that, quite frankly, deserves to be nowhere other than the bin. They think they can get away with it, but they haven't got away with it. And now they're in the embarrassing situation of having to refund a customer's money and go away with their tail between their legs, which, quite frankly, that's where it deserves to be. That was the end of the task. Pretty much the end of the story. And what an absolute nightmare we were faced with. We had to refund the customer. The production line is an absolute nightmare. And that's how I understand what a great job firms like Outstanding Branding do. We're able to sit as we should as a customer with that catalogue like we do as a kid as a kid at Christmas, look through, decide what we want and not worry about any of the stuff that we have to worry about. All we want is that product to arrive on time, the right quantity, the right price, and of course, the right quality. And that's what you guys are doing. And it's brilliant for me to be able to come in and talk about my experience and how hard it actually is to do fantastic service that a lot of you guys make look so, so easy. So, the end of task one, and we was in the boardroom, obviously, I've got to tell you the end of the story and what happened. So, starting uh, with the latest team. Yeah. Tim Sterling, uh, total sales £690.60. Minus a total spend of £475.80, that gave him a profit of £214.80. £214 profit. And count for the boys. Total sales came to £1,015.60. And you spent uh, £399.40 on printing and products, leaving your profit of £616.20. £616. Come on, the boys. So, yeah, no one was more surprised than me to say that we won that task. I was absolutely gobsmacked. Anyone that watched last year's show will be know that I completed every task. I got myself to the final, but unfortunately, I got the dreaded finger. I was fired <laughs> at the end of the last task. I knew it was coming that morning. I knew I'd had a bad day at the office. For those of you who remember, I actually did a terrible presentation, which led me to get into the speaking circuit and prove that I wasn't as bad as I was on the show. I knew I was going to get fired that morning. So I took it as an opportunity to sell myself very fitting to why we're here today. You're selling yourselves, you're selling your brand, you're selling your name, you're selling your logo in whatever way you can, namely promotional merchandising. I knew I was going to get the dreaded finger and I could have done one of few things. I could have took it really badly, started crying like a lot of people do, I could have blamed the edit, I could have blamed Lord Sugar, I could have blamed other team members, or I could have just seen it as an opportunity to sell myself. I'm going to have to say that, Adam, I think it's time for you to leave the process. You're fine. Thank you very much, I wish you all the best for the future, Adam, and I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for keeping in touch. If you ever need a salesman, you know where I am. Thanks very much. Thank you. seven, eight million people are going to be watching that show and I declared, if you ever need a salesman, give me a ring. If I'd had my way, I actually would have thrown a few pens over, mouse mats and my personal favourite, wall planners, which I swear by and have got a lot of work from. I don't think Lord Sugar would have been too impressed with those scattered across the boardroom table. What it, it did do was it led to me getting 30 emails in the next 10 days offering me sales roles one of which was coming out to China with a firm who was paying me a fantastic day rate to host a stand for them at the Canton Fair, which I did. And whilst I was out there, I brought some of my own products and branded them up. I don't want to get anyone too excited, but there's four of these up for grabs at the end of the presentation. For the four first questions that I get asked, a lot of you might have seen them. If not, you soon will, because Massive excitement and everyone will be running around using it at the end of the presentation, I'm sure. So, big brands. 
Obviously, we all know who these guys are. Facebook. I dare say every single person in the room is on Facebook. Yeah? There's always one or two around for various reasons that I won't go into. <laughs> Facebook, iconic worldwide brand. And why are they so big? Because they keep putting themselves out there, they keep changing, they keep pushing that brand. Do they use the promotional merchandise? Yes, of course they do. You know, Bebo and MySpace have exactly the same business model. Why is Facebook so much more successful? Because of the brand, because of the brand awareness and creative. And a lot of that has come through promotional merchandise. Just like the new kids on the block. <coughs> These guys, Twitter, they kept changing, they kept evolving the brand. Obviously, there's the first little cartoon bird that we all knew above. And then they changed it again. And now we've just got the silhouette of Twitter. But as soon as you see the, that bird, you know exactly what it is. It's so recognizable. And again, why are they so big? Because they keep pushing that brand forward and forward. They keep creating awareness, a lot of which is used through promotional merchandise. One of the big brands I can not talk about today, for me, is a company that didn't have an innovative idea, the belief in the brand and the awareness that they created made them a massive, massive success. This is a brand who, if they come to me with a business model, I would have said it's a load of rubbish, it's already been done, it's not original, it's not innovative, it will never work. And how wrong would I have been? It's these guys, innocent. The reason they're so big is because the brand is so strong. People have been making free use smoothies for thousands of years. It's nothing new, it's nothing innovative. It's not what they do, it's how they're doing it, which has made them a massive, massive global success. Only six weeks ago, I was in Leicester Square and they gave away 2,000 litres of innocent smoothie and 2,000 notebooks, all branded up, innocent. Even though they're so big, they're still pushing that brand awareness, they're still using promotional merchandise to make the brand a success. And that was noticed by a massive public who bought them recently. Does anyone know who bought Innocent recently? Coca-Cola. Sorry? Coca-Cola. That's right. The most recognisable name in the world. You can see this name in China. You know what it is. You can see it in Arabic. You know what it is. This, arguably, is the most recognisable name in the world. And why is it? Because it's such a strong brand. You're, more, you're just as likely to see the name Coca-Cola as you are on a bottle or a can, as you are on a t-shirt or a mirror or a pen or anything. The, the brand awareness is so, so strong. And a lot of that has come through, of course, promotion. Promotional merchandise. Nearly at the end now. To the fact where the brand became so strong that in my house it doesn't actually seem like Christmas until I see this. I don't know about you guys, but I don't start getting excited until this advert comes on my telly. That's how strong the Coca-Cola brand is. When I was finding that slide, and it took me a long time to find it, and I hope you like it, it's very fitting, obviously it's how London is in the background. I did some research into Coca-Cola and the Father Christmas and how they managed to associate themselves with one of the biggest celebrations of the year. And some people actually say that the reason Santa Claus is red is down to Coca-Cola and their brand and their awareness. I searched this heavily to find out whether it's true or false. He even wrote to Father Christmas. Unfortunately, as he did when he was a kid, he still hasn't gone back. So that's probably because he's been very busy, or maybe I've been very naughty. Don't know, but you decide. I am going to open the floor for any questions in a minute. I'm sure you've all got some fantastic questions for me. I love curveballs, I love being on the back foot. You can ask me absolutely anything you want. And as I said, the four first questions are going to win one of my promotional merchandise prizes. But before I open the floor for any questions to me, I'd like to ask you guys two questions. The first question the number of products you could order from the show today to enhance your brand, to sell yourself, to sell your brand awareness, to sell yourself in your company, to say, I made that happen, I put our brand in that place on that product. You know, the thing with promotional merchandise is if you can get your brand in the right place, you can sell and work for you while you're at home sleeping in bed. 
can sell and work for you. My wall planners, I have a Dubai. They're working for me in a different time zone, and I'm fast asleep in bed at the schools where I go in and enterprise and so on. And the second and last question I'd like to ask you today is, you need one thing that's stopping you. Absolutely nothing. Okay? I hope you've enjoyed the presentation today. I have an open book. Please do ask me any questions you like. Yes. Um, First poem as well. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> what it is, is it looks straight to your iPhone. I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the game, you've seen these before. It's not brand new, I didn't invent it. As I tell some people, I'm going to try to pull the phone over you, your, your eyes. But it looks straight to your iPhone. Okay, it's more retro style handset. Everyone's dying to ask a question, now everyone wants a phone. Put it straight in, you can still run your Twitter, your Facebook while you're in a car. If you're in a car and you want to make a diary appointment, you can go in and do that as well. If you're bored and someone's shooting your ear off, you can have a look in your face, but you can do what you want. But it's great fun as well, you know, if you're around the house, you pocket. I'm like I'm on the shopping channel, aren't I? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm walking in my way, I'm not going to lie, trying to sell. But yeah, that's what it is, okay. Sorry, your question. Um,
of sports in, it's been sport three times, I'm very good friends with him. Sorry, the question was, uh, has Lord Trigger been in touch yet? Yeah, he has. Spoke to him three times, I've been to his house for a barbecue, with Ricky Martin, the guy that won. Very, very grand place, down in Mountain. Great guy, a lot of time for Lord Trigger. My business plan was actually a product, which I'll be bringing out next spring. Lord Trigger expressed some uh, interest in getting involved in some way. So I don't really need much investment, um, but it would be great to have him as a mentor. So, yeah, in answer to your question, when he says keep in touch, I was the only one that got that, and I'm the only one that he has indeed kept in touch with, obviously over the break. And so did you go into the um, I, the, the show, the, the question I've just been asked was, uh, why, the reasons for going on the show really, and you know what, the show never appealed to me, but it's 100 grand a year employment. I didn't want to do that, I didn't know I was working myself. Really want to work with someone else, not in, in that sort of uh, capacity. But when it became an investment and I thought I'd change it to 250 grand, that's what I wanted. I wanted money and art, of course, I wanted the, 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 the mentor from Marjorie. And the fact that you can open doors, you know, you can open doors, it can get you in front of anyone with a heartbeat, you know. Anyway, I'm going to Yeah. Just show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when did it win? Were you approached as well by other investors? Yeah, well, was, was, he, was he approached by other investors at the end of the show? Yes, I was. Um, <coughs> it was a bit like Panic for Gold. I met more people than you can imagine. Emails, tweets, people getting in touch, people turning up on work, people writing their letters. Um, I had a, an 83 year old mathematical genius who wanted to start a lottery with me. He wouldn't believe the amount of things I was offered. But it was literally panic for gold, very, very frustrating because a lot of people just wanted to see what they could get out of me. And uh, it was a big learning curve for me, if I'm honest. You know, I think it's something by quite a few people, I wasted a lot of time. Um, Benefit from you know me being able to get them in place and stuff like that. You know, I, we sat down in front of you know, straight away with, with product, um, things like that. You know, but yeah, loads and loads of interest. And um, I've got, I have found that gold, you know, and I found a few nuggets. And I found a few nuggets who I will be working with, um, and incredible, incredible guys. So I can't wait for that. You know, I'm very, very, um, very grateful to the Prentice for, for giving me that sort of platform. Yeah. Next question. That's a bit suspicious that once the four phones have gone, <laughs> the questions have stopped. But okay, we've got another three phones. Yeah, see, I'm straight up. <laughs> okay. Was it cats and we one Uh, I, I left it behind, but I sat in the boardroom, stayed in the boardroom. Um, me and Stephen made it. Do you remember Steve, the dark hair bro? Yeah, me and him, fine, we, we went at it. We went at it, we did. And there was a moment in the boardroom where we were arguing, arguing, arguing. And we were like this, and this one, and we were on the faces. And it's all very real, you know, what you see. It's not three scripts or anything like that. It happens, it happens. Bold went. So they had to change the bold. One of the most awkward moments in my life. 20 minutes of little guys on the ladders, change the ball, we go up, sat down, and then start again. We went and it again. And we did, you know, all the was one of our best friends. Um, I didn't take anything personally. I knew the format of the show, I knew what I was getting into. And not only that, I was the only candidate who not only said what I thought in the boardroom, I actually got like, you're fired. And I said it again, I went to the radio and I said it again. And I said that certain individuals in the process. Just wanted to slip under the radar and see how far they could get, you know. But the Lord Trigger knew exactly who I was, he knew my name, he knew what it was about from me, you know. And that's my attitude against the Lord Trigger, that I do. So I stuck to my guns, I said about people, um, you know, why I wouldn't have to face like that. And luckily for me, I was able to leave it at the house, I leave it in the boardroom. But a lot of people did take it to the house with them, and a lot of people took things very, very personally, which we all know, you know, if it work, you can't take things personally. Great question, man. Oh. Run out of phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, for me to get my friend out, I think, 
what's, what's been beneficial to me. Uh, the the great question, what, what promotional merchandise has most benefited me? And for me, wall planners. <coughs> wall planners are actually fantastic. You know, it's one of the old ones. It's, it's not really thinking outside the box, you know, but why change something if it works for you? And with the work that I've given schools and everything, I sent out wall planners um, at the beginning of the game. Uh, and fantastic, fantastic response. That much so that I'm going to do one from September, you know, from September to September within the term time, I'm going to mark on all holidays and everything else, and I'll be back there, you know. So before the current ones have even run out, I'm already planning the next market strategy. And for me, as Adam Corley, your wife, the school speaker, you know, the dragon, the enterprise guy, that's paying the bills as well. I've got to do business boot camps with schools, between enterprise days. It pays the bills and it's very, very rewarding for me on a, on a personal basis. You know, I love it. You know, when you finish your day, sometimes you do a great job and maybe you paint the, you know, you paint the, a level playing field with some kids that didn't really have a choice, you know, to be in the first place. Paul Pondas did that for me. You know, it's an old one, as I say. To me, it's one that works, so why change something that works? I've got one phone left after this. <laughs> you know, okay, what do you see then? <laughs> Um, no, see, I don't know what you're doing at all. Um, so, what, what do you recommend? Are they something you're talking about? Oh, just not branding or? My new product, my new business idea. Yeah. Brilliant question. Yeah, I didn't watch the show. What's my business idea? No one knows. No one knows because I got fired just before. <laughs> so I got to the final, completed every task, but I got fired. No one actually knows. But I can tell you it's a gardening product. Oh, okay. Gardening product. And it'll be in the garden centre for next, next March. Uh, it's cheap to produce. It's brand new, it's innovative, it's an invention. It doesn't look like an inventor, but it is, it's an invention. And, uh, sorry? Um, how did I come up with the idea? Great question. I basically, when I applied for the show, I knew I wanted an investment. And I didn't have a clue. I sat down with my mum in the front room, we got the kettle on, and we had a brainstorm. Yeah, and we came up with six ideas. Some are good, some are, some are not so good. Six brand new ideas, you know, six inventions we went for. We narrowed it down to one, we did market research, we put together a 68 big business plan, we sat down with the accountants, we did a SWOT analysis on it. All, you know, all, all brand new stuff for me, really, because usually I'm a very straightforward guy in business, you know, I, I get something and I sell it on that. I'm afraid that's what I do, you know, I buy and sell, and I'm very, very simple like that. And for me to sit down and go through the SWOT analysis or everything else, massive learning, you know, and it, Hopefully, it's a viable business plan. Um, contact with me, and like you say, we're all here on set going next March. As a nation, you probably know it, we spend more on fishing than anything else. And the second one is our garden. Apparently, so. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Maybe I was wrong about Farmer Christmas and Coca Cola. I don't know. But yeah, um, great product. Look out for it. Remember to be safe. Anyone? Got another question? Got no forms left? You were waiting till I ran out, you don't want one. Okay. Thank you. Stella English, great question. So, uh, Stella was the last person to win, for those of you guys that don't know. She won the show when the format was £100,000 a year employment for a 12 month contract. Lord Sugar met his obligation to Stella, she won the show, he gave her a 12 month contract at £100,000. Not a job to be sticked at, I'm sure you all agree. Yeah. She took an opportunity from 16 candidates, she was all at one. Her argument was, the reason she took him to the tribunal and tried to sue him was that she said there was no job for her within the organisation, there was nothing for her to do. So to me, she should have done two things. She should have either called a meeting and said, well, there's nothing for me to do. I'm a bit of a spare. Now, yeah. what, you know, what can I do to earn my money, obviously? I don't want to get results, yeah? Apparently, she was told she couldn't have a meeting, okay? So in that case, I would have thought, right, I'm in a bit of a negative situation. Turn it into a positive, I'm being paid 100 grand a year to look for a job, you know? It's a lot more than to get on job seat. I'm going to look for a job anyway, six days a week or something. So if you're on 100 grand a year, look for a job, and not only are you looking for a job, you're also saying, I'm working for Lord Sugar at the moment, but I'm not happy there, I'm happy to work for you guys, you know. To me, she saw the negatives and not the positives. Uh, I can understand the frustration in, in, in some ways, 
some respect to my I call it like the boss's, the boss's uh, son or daughter syndrome. So when I was younger, I worked in a factory, the boss's son worked in that factory, and he'd come in and be a more money than you, and he'd have an easier time with you. And he'd say, does anyone want to pray with you? I'd be like, no, you a bit resemble that. So maybe she got a bit of trouble for me, but I used to stand with those students with organisations that were more money, just because she was more money than the other. So, you know,